Welcome back to the channel folks. So today we're going to start our little review and our shootout of the mini oscilloscopes. Now just to remind you the the four oscilloscopes we're using in this shootout here are the DSO 138, uh, Finerci DSO 138 Pro, the Finerci DSO 152 and the Z-Way DSO 154 Pro. So I'm going to look at display quality the controls, um, the physical protection of the device, the user interface, the usability of it, the documentation that comes with it, uh, the options to power it, screen size, the probes that it comes with, and that's advertised bandwidth, and then here does it meet that specification, the vertical range, the horizontal range per division, does it have roll mode or not, uh, the triggering functions, the memory depth, the sample rate, the types of measurements it has and how they can be configured, the accuracy of those measurements. And then each one has a signal generator. So the frequency range of that we looked at, the duty cycle and the waveforms, and of course price. In way of explaining these things a little bit better, let's go through the first one here. Everything I've filled in so far can be filled in just from picking up, looking at it and reading the specifications. That's the main basis of the, the score so far. So let's have a look at first with DSO-138. Now this is actually a clone of the DSO-138, but I haven't found any particular difference between it and the real one as far as specifications and whether or not it can meet them and its usability or anything like that. Other than it's a bit less expensive and I'm the price I've included down here is the price I paid for this. You would pay a little bit more for the genuine item. But anyway, um, display quality and controls are something I'm going to look into after I go through the usage of it. So as, as I use it, I'm going to rate each of the scopes on those categories. And there's a couple other categories here, like usability, does it meet specifications or not, or whether or not the measurements are accurate, and stuff like that. But for now, on, let's just go down through this one and we'll go through the categories that we can't answer right now and rate it according to those. So the user interface is, is Pretty simple. It's got uh, these buttons along the side here. It's got another button down here to reset the thing. And then it's got these switches over here. So switch the coupling. And these two here can control the attenuation and the sensitivity of the device. So this is this falls into the category of very simple user interface. Like there's there's not much to it. We'll go a little bit more into that too when we do the, the actual usage of it in part two. And you'll see what I mean by simple and basic and so forth. Now, the documentation, it comes with, uh, actually it's, it's two single sheets with assembly instructions and a schematic. The power options, it's only external power. Like there's no battery available for this, but as it stands right now, it'll take 8 to 12 volts into the DC barrel jack here or this little header here. And screen size is 2.4 inches, most of them are. The probes, all it came with, as far as probing is concerned, is this. So it's just a... They all came with this too, so this is pretty standard for all of them, a little BNC to alligator clip, one to one. The bandwidth is 0 to 200 kilohertz. We have to test that to see if that meets that specification. The vertical range with just this probe here is uh, from 10 millivolts to 50 volts. Now it'll go a little bit lower than that. 10 millivolts is the minimum per division, but the divisions are pretty small in this, so you're not going to get any accurate readings below that anyway. The horizontal range is from 10 microseconds to 500 seconds. It doesn't have roll mode. The triggering is just auto normal single and then rising and falling edge. Memory depth is specified as 1024 points. Sample rate is specified 1 million samples per second. The measurements are Vmax, Vmin, V average or mean. VRMS, V peak to peak, frequency, duty cycle, and period. And you either get all of those or you get none of those. And we have to measure how accurate that is. And the frequency range, one kilohertz to 80 kilohertz in one kilohertz steps. Duty cycle is supposed to be adjustable from zero to 100%. And the only available waveform is a square wave. This thing here costs $33.89. However, all the rest of these things come with the uh, some little modicum of more protection and a scope probe. If you were to add that onto this, it would cost you around about $48.79 for this, which would put it as the most expensive one by at least $4. 
you're actually better off just looking at it the way it is right now as far as the points are concerned. Now how did it score so far? So okay, with a single sheet with assembly instructions and schematic, I thought it's pretty nice to have a schematic just in case you wanted to search around and learn a little bit more. So I scored it as a two on this. And the way the scoring works is that if it doesn't have the feature or it's the minimum level of the feature, then it gets a zero. And then it goes up from there to a maximum of three. All the other scopes here come with an internal lithium battery. And so this doesn't have it. So it gets a zero on that. Screen size, that's the minimum, 2.4. The most of them are 2.4. There's only one of them is 2.8. So it gets a zero on that because it's the same as all the rest of them. BNC to alligator clip is the simplest arrangement. So it, you know, it gets a zero on that. Bandwidth 200 kilohertz, so that's the minimum. So it gets this minimum there to zero. Vertical range is the minimum here too. Now with a proper scope probe to it, uh, with a 10 times attenuator on it, you could get this up to 500 volts, which would definitely put it uh, kind of in the lead. So it could gain a few points there by adding that. Horizontal range for division. The other ones go 10 microseconds, 50 seconds except for this one over here, which goes from 50 nanoseconds to 10 seconds, which is, that gets the one because that's more desirable. The rest of them here get the zero. Roll mode, no, so it gets the zero in there. Triggering, this is the same trigger. They've all got the same triggering here, so I just should take that category yet because they all got zero on that. Memory depth, this is the only one with a published memory depth. So it gets a one here. Uh, sample rate, uh, one mega samples per second, 2.5, 2.5. 40, so it gets a zero in that category. Uh, measurements, frequency range, one kilohertz to 80 kilohertz in one kilohertz step. That is not very great, but it's better than what this scope does, which is just one single frequency. And the same here with the duty cycle, it's adjustable, it wasn't on this one. Waveform, just square only, and of course we've already discussed price. All right, so that's the, the DSO-138. Let's have a look now at the next one on the line there. This is Finerci 138 Pro. Now I gave this a, a one for protection because it's got, uh, you know, it, nothing can fall on and short anything out unless you stick it in the sides. The sides are open on it. So that reduces the protection a little bit, but it, it gets a one for that. The uh, user interface is simple. It's basically the same user interface as the previous scope. It's got a few less buttons on it, but uh, complexity of having extra buttons is offset by the complexity of having to use these buttons a little bit more to get what you want. Now, power options, it's got external 5 volts via USB. It can be operated when it's plugged into the USB, so that's really nice. And it's got an internal lithium battery. It's supposed to get up to six hours of continuous use on that, so that's not bad. So it gets a, a two for that. Screen size is it's the same as the other three that have 2.4, so it gets zero on that. Probes, it's got a BNC to alligator clip and a 1x, 10x, 100 megahertz probe. So it gets a two in that category. Now bandwidth zero to 200 kilohertz. Like I say, it's the same as a bunch of the others. So it's the lowest common denominator. Vertical range, five millivolts to 400 volts or 40 volts without the 10 times probe. So I gave this a two on that. The horizontal range, 10 microseconds to 50 seconds. That's the lowest common denominator. So it gets a zero. Roll mode, no, gets a zero. Memory depth not specified, so it gets a zero. I do have a question into Fernisi about this one and this one, Let's see if they respond to me. Our sample rate is a 2.5 million samples per second, yeah, so it gets a one there. The reason it gets a one is because there's a much better one over there, and it's hugely better. Measurements, it gets a zero there. Now here they have the very same specifications for the oscillator too, so I think this is thing that's really improved about this one over this one as far as performance is concerned, is the number of samples per second and the sensitivity. Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same. The real big feature on this one, of course, is the eternal lithium battery and the uh, USB powering. I should mention the menu too. It's a single sheet and it's in two languages, so it's not quite as useful to me as the, the one with the schematic. And price of the rest of them here, this is the most expensive one which is yeah, pretty interesting when you see the capabilities of some of the other ones here. Yeah, form factor wise, this one is a, is way better. I mean, like this nice little case on it, just handling it, the controls are a lot nicer. These are nice big buttons with a nice field of them. And it's got this little selector here that rolls backwards and forwards like this for, for going through the different items. Nice power switch up front. That's nice. I and mean, the, the form factor of this one is really nice. 
Uh, there's no two in this category. Everything else is just got one or zero. So it got a little a couple extra points for being just a really nice little package. Now it's got a multi-language booklet. It's the only one that does come. Now, as far as multi-language goes, I think it's Chinese, English, and Spanish, I believe. Got Russian in there as well. So yeah, it's, it's a, a quite a few languages in here. So I've got a point there for that over everybody else. Uh, power options, it's the same as this one. Five volt external via USB-C. You can operate it while it's plugged in and charging. And it's got the internal lithium battery again, a 1000 milliamp hour battery. And again, the lifetime of the battery is supposed to be about six hours. Now this one's also got the bigger screen. It's not a heck of a lot bigger, but it does make a difference. You compare it to this, it, it is a big chunk bigger and it makes it a little bit clearer to see as well. So we got a one, everything else got a zero. It's got a BNC to alligator clip. It's got the one X 10 X hundred megahertz probe and it's got this BNC adapter and I dinged it for this. The, the input on it here is, uh, I don't know what you call that. I'm not sure what that is called. I guess I could look it up. Uh, if anybody knows, leave it down in the notes and, and share that uh, information as soon as possible. But, it, you know, this thing clicks in here. And by the time you get the probe connected up to it, and then you start using this in here, this becomes a, a major point of failure. Like, this is not very sturdy. And you got this big, long arm here. So I'm just surprised actually that uh, they didn't put a proper BNC connector on that. That would have been a much better option than this. So I think that a point on that. 200 kilohertz bandwidth, so it gets a zero for that. It's the same sensitivity as the other Fernese, so it gets a two. They've got the best overall sensitivity range. It's also got the same 10 microseconds to 50 seconds, no roll mode. Memory depth, again, it's not specified. My question's out to Fernese on that. 2.5 mega samples per second it's got the same measurements now here's where it loses a little bit is that it's only got one kilohertz out here for the compensation that's it a one kilohertz 50 percent square wave and no adjustability there whatsoever so it loses a couple of points in that price wise it is the second most expensive it's point total so far is 14. the other one this little one here point total so far is 12. And this one here, point total so far is nine. So this is the, the Zayway DSO-154 Pro. Uh, Size-wise, it's about the same as that uh, Fernisi we just looked at. The user interface is rather extensive. You go through the manual, it's got a menu system. You can do a heck of a lot more with it. You can enable things and disable things that you can't with the other ones. This, is, it, this wins big on its uh, user interface. It just gives you a lot more control over the device. Documentation is, you know, it's the worst of the lot as far as uh, what kind of information they give you. It's just, they give you enough information to use it, but they don't give you anything else. I mean, there's no second languages. It's the least extensive documentation of the lot. Power options, it, uh, it's got a five volt via USB, but it's charge only. So as soon as you plug in that USB cable and it switches off on you. So you can only operate this on the lithium battery. So we got ding the point for that. Screen size is 2.4, so it gets the zero that all the other 2.4s get. It gets two on the probes. Bandwidth, I had to give this one a three. It's 18 megahertz bandwidth. That, if I'm not mistaken, about 90 times the other three. Now the vertical range, for some reason, I'm only giving 20 millivolts for, per division. I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I mean, if these other less expensive scopes can, can do, you know, four times better. But that is what it is. So it only receives a one on vertical range. Horizontal range, it receives a one for that too. The others receive zero, but this goes from 50 nanoseconds. And that goes along with the 18 megahertz bandwidth. I mean, you need the 50 nanoseconds in order to be able to display anything there. So roll mode, yes, it does have roll mode. I don't tend to use roll mode a lot, but I know some people really love it. You can turn it on or turn it off, or you can leave it as automatic. Sample rate, again, I got to give this a three. It's 40 million samples per second. 16 times better than the other two, 40 times better than that one. Measurements, uh, this is a, maybe I should even give it more for measurements because it's, it's quite nice. It's got a lot more parameters you can measure. So on top of these ones here, it's got amplitude, it's got uh, time high and time low, as well as duty. It's got top and base and period. And the really nice thing is they're individually selectable. So you can have just frequency and amplitude if you want, or VPP and period, or 
whatever you want. That's a nice feature. So I was thinking of giving that a three for that, but uh, I already gave it a two. And the frequency range on the, the signal generator is pretty good too. Now the specifications say zero to 500 kilohertz. It actually goes up to one megahertz. Now the adjustability of it is, uh, it depends on what range you're in. So it gives you three different ranges, hertz range, kilohertz range, and megahertz range. So in either one of those ranges, you can increase it by one one hundredth of that range value. So if you're in the kilohertz range, you can increase it by 10 hertz or decrease it by 10 hertz. It also has multiple waveforms here, which is really nice. Three points for that. I didn't rate this yet. So that would be at two. And it should get a, a one here as well. So there's three extra points. So this should be up around 25 in actuality. Let me scribble that in. It's got sine, square, triangle, ramp, half wave, full wave. And it's like half wave rectification, full wave rectification, cardiac and noise. That's got to be worth three points more than just having a square wave. So I'm impressed with that little function generator built into this. Then I'll line up for a classroom shot here. And this is how they rate so far. We've got 9, 12, 14, 25. Now, another thing I should bring up. I have two of these. The first one that arrived, I mean, I took it out of the box, turned it on, and tried to operate some of the controls, but uh, it's got this problem where it resets. And it looks like it's, it's when the board flexes or you know gets vibration. I did contact Fernisi. All they wanted to do is see a little video of the problem happening, and they asked me a couple more questions. And then they sent me a brand new one, which uh, works perfectly. No issue at all getting that replaced at 100% value. They didn't ask me for shipping or anything else. They didn't ask me to send this one back. I might be able to see where there's a bad connection under here and fix it up. That's for a different video. All right, folks. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you in part two. I'll probably get part two up uh, on Thursday, unless something comes up or I have to do something else. And uh, I'll see you in that one. Be good. Be safe. Bye-bye.